Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Tarentum's Thought for the Day. And amen, as we do every week, we welcome the Holy Spirit's presence. We pray that he would move in this 10 or so minute session. Give us a word from the Lord and give us what we need to be able to go into a new week. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this opportunity and we thank you. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, continuing to glean thoughts for the day that prayerfully will go with us throughout the week from the life of Joseph. And I can't speak for you all, but I always knew that Joseph was an important person in the lives of the Christians and in the life of um, the Israelites. And, and so certainly we knew that, um, but I have learned so much personally from the life of Joseph when you take it and you break it down piece by piece, what he experienced and what those around him and connected to him experienced because of what God was doing through him. And so on today, today we are going to continue that journey and we're going to be taking a closer look at Genesis, the 43rd chapter, verses 16 through 22. That's Genesis, the 43rd chapter, verses 16 through 22. And it reads, when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph said and brought the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house and they said, it is because of the money replaced in our sacks the first time that we have been brought in so that he may have an opportunity to fall upon us, to make slaves of us and take our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the entrance of the house. They said, Oh my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food. And when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks and there was each one's money in the top of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it back with us. Moreover, we have brought down with us additional money to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our Sacks. Amen for the reading of God's word. And so the backdrop of today's thought for the day is that Israel, Jacob, has now conceded that they need the provisions and he has sent his sons to go back to who ultimately was Joseph, um, even though they did not know at this point that that's who it was, to obtain additional provisions. Because as we talked about last week, they just had no choice but to do it. And, and when God directs us to do something, we need to just do it, even though it doesn't make sense to us. And so here we have uh, the brothers along with Benjamin have now returned to Egypt. And when they get there, Joseph sees Benjamin, who is his full brother. The others are half brothers, but shoot, in the way that our families are set up these days, brothers and sisters are brothers and sisters, whether they're half, whether they're full, whether they're step, uh, we just love one another as we should, as brothers and sisters in Christ. But he was particularly joyful to see his full brother, his younger brother, Benjamin, in their midst. And that, that meant something to Joseph to just see Benjamin. He was joyful about it. And he called 
for the men to be brought down to have a meal with him. Now, please understand what a big deal this was. These were strangers in this land. These were individuals who had, as far as they knew, no connection to the royal, to the elite of Egypt. And all they wanted was to go down here and give this money get this food and go back to their homeland and live forevermore. Had it not been for this drought, they never ever would have gone to Egypt. And, and although we've talked about it before, that's important to know that if it wasn't for the hard times, these men never would have made it to their point of journey to where God would have wanted them to be. So, so that one is free this morning. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but I feel that I needed to hear it. And maybe uh, one of you needed to hear this morning that the bad times get us to where God would have us to be, but okay, okay. And so here we have uh, the brothers. Once they heard that they were being honored that they were being brought to have dinner with the second in command in Egypt, they immediately began to question why. Why were they being blessed in the way that they were? Um, what was happening around them? That they began to question it. Now, let's not be so hard on the brothers, because how many times have we questioned God's blessings? Have we questioned what he's doing and how he's doing it? That we have no understanding for what's going on around us, good or bad. Uh, but these gentlemen, they were questioning and, and, and trying to make sense out of what was happening in their lives. Um, they tried to rationalize what was going on and it was impossible for them to make any sense out of it. It was impossible because it was all God. It was impossible because our minds are not like his. We don't think like God thinks. So in our human, in our humanness, we make efforts to try to explain what God is doing in our lives, but, but just like these brothers, it's impossible. And so let me just say that this morning, as we see the, the moves of God in our lives and in our minds, we try to rationalize what's going on, why it's happening, um, it's impossible. It's impossible for us to really explain God and to explain what he's doing. So, so we're trying to make sense of it. They're trying to make sense of it. And, and they did the best they could. And, and they came up with some reasons for why they were being called in to have this meal with the second in command. And, and so they go up to one of the servants and they begin to explain and they say, um, you know, th th we brought the money. We tried to pay for our provisions. When we got back where we were going, we saw that the money had been returned to us. And, and, and certainly in, our, in their minds, this was the reason that they were being brought in to see the second in command. They did the best they could to provide what, what were rational explanations. Um, and, and then, like I said, they told others. They gave that same explanation that they had come up with in their minds to that servant, none of which was right. And let me just focus on that again. None of which was right. We do the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. We first and foremost try to make sense out of what's going on in our lives and, and the blessings of God that are occurring in our lives. And then we, we try to come up with some reasons for why God is doing what he's doing. And, and when we come up with those reasons, we, we then try to, to make sense of it and explain it to others. 
all to no avail because at the end of the day, we have no idea why God is doing what he's doing in our lives. And from here is where our thought for the day comes. Our thought for the day is, there is no explaining God's blessings. Amen. That touched me this morning. And my prayer is that it touches each and every one of you. We can try to make sense of it. We can come up with reasons for it. But in our humanness, we need humanness. We need to understand that there's no explaining God's blessings. Amen for that. I, I, I have to admit, I'm grateful that I can't explain it because why would we need him if we could do it all ourselves? Uh, but we have to rely on him. And, and for that reason, we just can't explain. His thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So let me leave you with that. I uh, don't want to belabor the point this morning. There's no explaining God's blessings. Please, ladies and gentlemen, carry that thought for the day into this upcoming week. Allow it to minister to your spirit that there's no explaining God's blessings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your servant, Joseph. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to glean just bits of wisdom from the life of Joseph, for allowing us to be able to learn just a little bit more about ourselves as we look at Joseph and his life. Heavenly Father, for today, for this upcoming week, our prayer is, Heavenly Father, is that you would cause us to never, ever forget that there's no explaining God's blessings. Uh, and quite frankly, we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you that there is no explaining God's blessings. So Heavenly Father, our prayer, our prayer right now is as we try to make sense of it and as we come up with reasons for it and even as we try to explain to others the goodness of God in our lives that we never, ever lose sight of the fact that there's no explaining God's blessings. Please cover us and keep us and bring us back safely again. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.